What you give power to has power over you, if you allow it. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we learn how to build mental fortitude and why it's something we all must do. Enjoy. There's a big difference between having fortitude and hiding away in a fortress. In the latter case, we physically separate ourselves through self-isolation. Oftentimes, this is an attempt to hide from the big, bad things in the world. It's not unlikely that serial self-isolators suffer from feelings of powerlessness, believing that what's happening outside is too much for them, as they lack the strength and skill to cope. Unfortunately, they miss out on many life experiences simply because they do not want to face the malevolence of humankind. Now, there's another way to go about this. Instead of self-isolation, we could choose to strengthen our faculties, meaning that we become more resilient towards unpleasant people and situations and don't let them stop us from living a good life. What exactly does fortitude mean? The definition of fortitude, according to online dictionary Merriam-Webster, is strength of mind that enables a person to encounter danger or bear pain or adversity with courage. Stoic fortitude, therefore, is the art of strengthening the mind with Stoic principles, so we become less inclined to hide away in our fortresses, so we live life more fully. The Stoics were masters at approaching the world with logic and reason, showing us that many external things are actually unworthy of our attention. Other people's opinions aren't as important as we think, and a good reputation is just a commodity that brings us from point A to point B. According to the Stoics, we can't change the world, but we can change our mindset, and thus, the position we take towards the world. With the right mindset, we can overcome any adversity. Of course, this isn't easy. It takes a lot of practice. So how can Stoic principles transform our mindset? First of all, we might have certain beliefs that evoke irritation in us. Sometimes so much so that it becomes a difficult task to merely live. Thus, not life itself, but our beliefs about how life should and shouldn't be are the cause of our pain. The logic behind this is that we tie our happiness to certain expectations. So when these expectations repeatedly do not come to fruition because they don't align with an undeniable and inevitable reality, we suffer. An example of this we can find in a letter that Stoic philosopher Seneca wrote to his friend Serenus. Serenus wished that people wouldn't treat each other with rudeness and scorn. But Seneca explained to him that this is the wrong way to look at it. I quote, You are expressing a wish that the whole human race were inoffensive, which may hardly be. Moreover, those who would gain by such wrongs not being done are those who would do them, not he who could not suffer them, even if they were done. End quote. Thus, by changing how we look at the world, we relieve ourselves from the pain of resistance. Life is full of pain, and full of people that are rude, selfish, and violent. The less we resist this fact, the more we can face the world in a tranquil manner. In his work of peace of mind, Seneca argued that we cannot live well if we don't know how to die well. If we know that death is the fate that was laid upon us, the moment we were born, we will live according to it. This realization adds to our mental fortitude. Knowing that we could die any time, nothing can befall us unexpectedly. I quote, For by looking forward to everything which can happen, as though it would happen to him, he takes the sting out of all evils, which can make no difference to those who expect it, and are prepared to meet it. Evil only comes hard upon those who have lived without giving it a thought, and whose attention has been exclusively directed to happiness. Disease, captivity, disaster, conflagration, are none of them unexpected. I always knew with what disorderly company nature has associated me. End quote. 
We'll continue with Epictetus. Epictetus teaches us the foundation of mental fortitude, which is the curbing of our desires and aversions. Most people that go into the world desire certain outcomes. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but such a stance has its consequences. I quote, He who is making progress, having learned from philosophers, that desire means the desire of good things, and aversion means aversion from bad things. Having learned too, that happiness and tranquility are not attainable by man, otherwise than by not failing to obtain what he desires, and not falling into that which he would avoid. Such a man takes from himself desire altogether, and defers it, but he employs his aversion only on things which are dependent on his will. End quote. This very much applies to everything we do. As Abictetus states in his work The Enchiridion, things beyond our control are weak and slavish. And if we let our mood depend on things that are not up to us, we find ourselves in quite a feeble position. Therefore, according to Epictetus, we should be indifferent towards anything independent of our own will. Because if we aren't, we let external factors rule over our ability to be happy. Mental fortitude, therefore, entails a healthy contempt for the things beyond our control, things we normally approach with desire and aversion. This means ceasing to desire that people like you, ceasing to be averse to losing your possessions, and focusing entirely on your own actions. Please keep in mind, this is about half of the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.